Okay, guys. Um, let's go back to. I mean, let's go to uh, electrical trade theory into a thing. Is a is a hard topic right now. I'm gonna make just a short video for that. But before we go there, guys, I don't, I just wanna I just wanna go back to something that is very important that I think I left without explaining on the DC machines. You see on this table here, the separately excited and the shunt they have the same. Uh, characters they have the same characteristic curve they are used for the same application so separate the excited and the shunt the only thing that differs is just the drawing but they behave actually the same you can even see that these two are actually facing each other the same way they are facing each other they just that only the currents are gonna are gonna differ but that's basically it so i want to go to i want to go back to um a thing so that we can just simply uh, complete this chart. But guys, we spoke about adding and we said adding and the purpose of it is to make sure that all the faulty current is sent to the ground. Let me just make this picture a little bit bigger. Maybe, yeah, just like that. Okay, so let's look at this system without adding. So there is a fault. In other words, the live wire is activate is 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 touching the surface and the whole surface is now full of electricity. When this person touches, look at the electricity going through their body right to the to the ground. Because what electricity wants to do is to go to the ground. So this person would be shocked or electrocuted. Right. So it's gonna receive an electric shock. Look at the one that is at there is also a fault, but look at the fault current. It is allowed let me just uh, erase some of these lines. Right, it is allowed, if you look at this, here there's no uh, path for this electricity to go to the ground. That's why it's using this human being. But here, there's a path. You can see that it's going to the ground. So when it is going to the ground, here's the S there. That S is connected to the to the to the frame meaning all this fault current is going to go to the ground so when a person touches it doesn't go through through the person so that's what ething is all about so if we were to define ething or we we, we say the purpose of ething is to ensure that when an electric fault occurs anywhere on the installation uh, there is a, a path that is there for the fault current to escape to the to the ground that is what the purpose of ething is all about. Okay. So what else are we supposed to know about ething? Is the fact that um we basically just making sure that all fault currents, um, it can be um what is this? It's static charges, um, lightning and um uh, leakage currents are sent to the ground immediately to avoid electrical shock on human beings. All right. Now, I think for it to actually happen, you need something called an electrode. An electrode is the piece of metal that goes to the to the to the ground. Copper, a uh, uh, copper um electrode, the one that goes to the ground. Uh, I'm trying to get you a picture of it. I'm trying to get you a picture of it so that you understand uh, you, you understand it fully. I just got something here that looks uh, nice. And I'm gonna just come and put put it here on our on our diagram. All right, I'm just gonna put it here on the edge chain. So look at this picture here. There's the copper conductor. It's not that clear, but there's the copper conductor, and you can see the earth wire is connected there so that all the fault currents are therefore going to use this route to the ground using that earth, earth road there, right? Let me just delete that, okay? So that is what an earth road is. Um, and what is an earth conductor? Um, an earth conductor, guys, you must, you must please read these terms there on page 191. It, it's a conductor including any clamp, by which connections of the consumer's earth uh, can be uh, can be made. So it's a, an earth conductor, just like this conductor that you can see here, that green, 
and gold wire them. That one is the earth conductor, this one. That one over there is an earth conductor. All right. Now, what is an earth terminal? You also go through that. But what is more important, maybe, that you need to learn is an earth continuity conductor. All right. Um, if we can read them, um, I'm asking you guys to please read and make notes, okay? They say an earth continuity conductor is a conductor including any clamp or terminal that connects consumer's terminal earth to the exposed parts of the installation, to the exposed part of the installation. You can see this part is exposed. This stove is exposed. So this stove is exposed to, to faults. It can be even a house. A house, the roof is exposed to lightning or tall uh, poles, they're exposed to lightning. So they need to be connected via an earth conductor. Now, conduct. Uh, now, for the purposes of adding such parts and carrying what fault current that may exist, that is what an earth continuity conductor is. Now, they are telling us the specifications of that earth continuity conductor. They are like seven points that you need to learn there on page 192. Uh, that how what that earth continuity conductor must be like. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but please, there are the things that you need to read. Now, what is an earth chain, guys? What is an earth chain? So an earth chain is just basically telling us what happens if there's a fault. And how does how how do we deal with a, 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 a fault? So you've got a conductor that is connected to a connector, and that connector is connected to a, a rod. You remember the rod that goes to the ground? Um, and that rod is then gonna be connected to the to the soil. Uh, we have a conductor that connects to a connector. I want to see if this thing is not true. Then you have an earth rod. And then you have got the, the rod to the soil. And then finally, you're going to have the, the soil. So really, now <clears throat> let's look at this picture once more. Same thing. This is what we are talking about. If you, if you look at this picture clearly, you've got a conductor. There's our conductor that connects to a connector. And that connector connects to the earth rod. That earth rod connects to the soil. And then from the soil, rod to the soil, and then the actual soil at the bottom. So we're just basically talking about that. That is our earth thing chain. Now, <clears throat> the next page, page 93, talks about an installation that is uh, to be connected or to be at. I wrote this on the, um, let's say a thing and installation. Now, I did write something on the board here to say, let's say you have got a stove and that stove, um, you're definitely going to have a DP box with an earth bar. Now, how are we going to add this? I'm just going to use a green, green, green highlighter. For earth, there we go. And then it so it connect the frame is connected to the to the DP. The DP is then going to have a a wire going down to down to the to the earth, to the soil, and then obviously here you're gonna find the, the earth rod. I'm just gonna put it in in red, the earth rod and the soil, everything. So this is how a, an installation will be, will be connected. So you got a stove, got a distribution board, you have a, an earth bar. This is our typical installation that is now at a uh, right. Oh, yes, there we are going to have an earth con, con um, what you call the thing, um, a, a, a that protective device with the test button. Okay, right. Um, an earth leakage unit, as you can see on page one ninety three. So they are introducing an earth leakage unit. There's no need for us to draw that here. You're gonna learn more about it on protection as to how it works. 
as to how it actually functions. It's the one that will trim if ever there's a fault that it can continue to conduct. Please go through that, those notes and try, try to, to learn them. Now, another terminology that we need to learn now is go to page 194, guys. We are going to learn about bonding to it. What does it mean to say bonding to it? It simply means to bring all bonded parts into one electrical what? potential. In other words, if I were to have a, a, a light bulb here, bonding, I would take this one, connect it there, so they have been bonded together. If I were to have a three-pin plug, I'll connect the earth there, bonded together into one electrical potential, and they are all sent to the ground via this one a wire. Okay, and then uh, what else needs to be a uh, bonded on on the last um uh, on page one ninety four on the last um paragraph, if a building is connected to an electrical supply, the roof, the gutter, the pipes, the waste pipes, shall must all be bonded. Okay, um, what is floating at? Let's talk about floating air on page 195. Floating air is found on um, double insulated portable tools such, such as amatrillas and angle grinders. Right. Um, so if they ask you to define uh, a floating air, you just tell them that, excuse me, it's air that is found on double insulated portable tools such as uh, grinders. In other words, guys, if you look at a grinder, um, there's no way where it can be exposed to. That's why we say it's double insulated. It's insulated on the inside, even the handle is insulated. There's no way where you can actually get an electrical shock there. Um, so those those are floating air. Um, touch voltage. Touch voltage is the voltage that appears when you touch, like this gentleman here. When he touched the first one, since it was not at, he felt a touch voltage. Now, touch voltage uh, are in two um, ways. It's direct or indirect. So you can touch directly the stove. So the stove, you are not touching a wire, but you are touching the stove. So this is indirect because you are touching live wire, but fire the stove. Direct is when this person goes and touches the wire itself. That should be a direct touch voltage. So those are the two. All right now let's go to overhead lines how do we add an overhead line here's an overhead line you can see the tallest wire there tallest 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 it's where we put the earth wire for lightning if lightning strikes it's going to strike the, the the tallest wire and the, the other wires will be will be safe right so there is what um that's what adding of overhead wires is all about yes that's what adding of overhead wires is all about. So if the question asks, how do you add overhead wires? By erecting the highest the, the, uh, add wire above all the other wires okay. in, in case of lightning. Now, how do we add an underground cable? An underground cable is added on the wire armorings. We add it on the wire armorings by using something called an earth uh, a cable gland with a washer. This is a cable gland. Uh, this is the cable gland, and this is the washer. The one with, with the holder is a washer. And then this part here is a cable gland. So a cable gland, now a washer is inserted on a cable gland here. Um, so what is the function of a cable gland? It is to terminate the wire armorings. In other words, after you insert the cable gland, you no longer see the, the wire armorings. They are, they are now terminated. And then this is the, there on that hole or in this hole, that's where you're going to find the, the air thing. That's where the air thing is going to be taking place. The air wire will be connected there. So that is what uh, we need this at the cable plane for. All right. Um, and would you believe me if I say that this is all that you needed to know? This is all that you needed to know concerning air thing. It's all that you needed to know concerning earthing. Yes, so um, the function of this uh, cable gland is to terminate the wire armorings. And then, uh, but there are ways in which you, you, you need to insert this, okay? 
we must make sure that when you're inserting the cable gland, uh, there's no pressure to be applied on the insulating material as you tighten. So there's the insulating material when it's, as you tighten, don't harm those insulating materials there. That is very important. Now the EdTech washer will ensure good electrical continuity. So the EdTech washer there is to ensure good electrical what? continuity. As 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 uh, as you can see there, I, I I want us to see perhaps a a diagram that shows this in practice. Um, I just hope this is going to work out. Um, there we go. There it is. Let me just take this one over all of them. Let's just see this picture here. As you can see, here's our armored cable. There's the EdTech washer. You can see now the Ed wire has now been connected on that. So this cable gland has terminated. Terminate means to finish off, so to speak, has terminated. The wire armorings now, the wire armorings are no longer gonna show. Instead, what's gonna show is the, is the cable gland as well as the EdTech washer. So that's where the, the connection is gonna be made. Then this one can, can be connected uh, to Earth to an earth a uh, cable that's how this is going to be at guys this is the end thank you so much for tuning in and uh, please take your notes write down read 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 it's going to be very interesting going forward thank you so much